Thank you. It's a, a great pleasure to be here. Um, it was a, a real honour to accept the research award at the AWA dinner in October. I know there was a lot of quality nominations and I, I was lucky enough to meet a couple of fellow finalists and that, a lot of really exciting projects going on in the water industry. And uh, our project about anamox and nitrogen removal is very relevant at the moment. I know as discharge limits get stricter and uh, the com community has higher expectations in terms of discharge their waterways, it's becoming uh, an increasingly interesting topic to be involved in. So before I get started, I'll uh, take the chance to give us a quick plug. So uh, we're a small specialist engineering consulting firm operating in water, energy, resources, land development, environment and sustainability. And research is one of our pass passions. We've uh, come up with a variety of proprietary technologies for nutrient removal, as well as uh, covering biogas lagoons and uh, nymph modelling and, and those sort of things. But let's get into the, uh, the main event, which is the Animox project. So the main goal was to understand the process, requirements and the difficulties in implementing Animox in an existing wastewater treatment plant. We felt we could get the, the most benefits if we could explore retrofitting plants with Animox, what the costs were involved, the difficulties and, and those sort of things. So the, the goals were to retrofit the process, as I just said, in place of a conventional nitrification, denitrification process, uh, to implement a continuous real-time monitoring and control system uh, so we can monitor the plant off-site and gain uh, high quality data to optimise the process and, and learn more about it as well as conducting a long-term study on the performance uh, of the process to identify variables that should be optimised and uh, the difficulties associated with implementing Animox and finally, in real-world terms, determine the savings in both electricity <coughs> and chemical and sludge management by employing the Animox process in place of conventional nitrification, denitrification for a medium-sized plant. So uh, Dardnut Butchering Company has been one of our long-term clients. So in 2001, we originally uh, designed a plant to treat water with a BOD of about 2,000, total nitrogen between 350 and 450 milligrams per litre at a flow rate of uh, 0.5 MLD. Um, but bioavailable carbon in the influent was reduced uh, to 1,200 from 200 following some changes in the abattoir processing part of the plant. And uh, the, we had to start dosing methanol at a cost of $109,000 per annum to meet the carbon requirements of nitrification, denitrification. And that was only going to increase further as the local methanol plant uh, shut down. So to reduce chemical dosing and power at costs, uh, we decided the Animox process should be trialled and implemented uh, following several years of modelling and laboratory studies. It's been a key research um, interest of Raj Kuru, who will be talking later today. Uh, and we had some challenges to overcome, of course. Uh, so these included the very slow grow growth rate of Animox bacteria between nine days to two weeks doubling time, as well as their sensitivity to sudden changes in environmental conditions. And the fact that at the time, a full scale trial of Animox hadn't been reported in Australia. So I won't spend too long talking about uh, Animox and nitrification, denitrification in the interest of time, but it's simply, uh, traditionally the nitrification, denitrification process follows a, an aeration step where your incoming ammonia nitrogen is uh, oxidised in two steps to nitrate via nitrite, and then the denitrification stage is the anaerobic stage where carbon's the electron donor that um, reduces your nitrate to nitrogen gas, which then bubbles out of the system. So whereas Animox, uh, you conduct a partial nitratation step first where half your ammonia is oxidised to nitrite and then you get a direct reaction between the ammonia and the nitrite via the Animox pathway into nitrogen gas. So in terms of what benefits this has over the conventional process, uh, in terms of the carbon requirement, you, re you need 2.6 kilograms of BOD per kilogram of nitrogen removed in the conventional system where you don't need a carbon source for an Animox system. You require 4.6 kilograms of oxygen per kilogram of nitrogen in the conventional system. Only 1.9 kilos is required in Animox, which is 59% less. And you also produce a lot less volatile suspended solids. Um, 
which obviously helps with your sludge management costs. So you only produce 0.08 kilos instead of one kilo per kilogram of nitrogen removed. So you get a reduction in energy demand, uh, 60 to 90 percent depending on the aeration efficiency, as well as a smaller reactor footprint and a reduction of uh, CO2 emissions in terms of your energy use. So um, this is what we're currently treating, 0.5 MLD, BOD down to 1200 and the TN can vary between 150 and 450 milligrams per litre and the phosphorus between 30 and 80. And um, we implemented the Animox control system in late 2016 and uh, developed and evolved it further during 2017. And we continuously monitor parameters such as COD, nitrate, nitrite, ammonia, pH, temperature, DO, um, as well as have an automated aeration control system. And we're constantly monitoring that system uh, to ensure smooth operation. So just a simple PFD, the wastewater goes through a pre-treatment DAF type system before the anaerobic and then into the Animox pond before uh, it's treated and then irrigated at the site. So that's an aerial view of the, of the shot, uh, of the plant. And uh, this is the Animox pond here and the anaerobic in the background. And uh, my, <laughs> my data presentation professors would probably be scolding me for this uh, graph back at uni. There's a lot going on here. But I guess the important things to note is uh, from the initial implementation of the control scheme, we had been playing around with Animox before our controls. Uh, the TN in green has, has come down and it's consistently between the 20 and 30 milligram per litre um, range in the, in the Animox pond. And the nitrate stays fairly low, very low. That's the red line at the bottom there. And in terms of performance in uh, summer and winter, we, we have consistent performance. One of the problems with uh, the Animox technology that's been developed in Europe is in winter, they really struggle uh, to, to get the bacteria working. Um, so they have to play around with uh, temperature jackets and that, that sort of thing. Whereas our system doesn't need any temperature control uh, in Bunbury. So we've got the consistent performance in summer and winter, as well as our external testing to make sure the sensors uh, are doing their job correctly. So a typical value of TN in the irrigation pond is about 15 milligrams per litre that, that gets irrigated. So in terms of the, our recorded numbers and the difference in terms of costs, uh, the aeration costs are significantly reduced, as you can see there, from, from 70k to 57k. Uh, this is before Animox and, and after Animox. And the operating cost, a significant part of that is the fact we don't have to dose <coughs> methanol now. So about a 100k saving with the aeration saving has led to significant operating costs for, for our client, which they're obviously very happy about. And in terms of the, the dollar cost per kilogram of nitrogen removed, that's gone from about $3.60 to $1.20 after the implementation of Animox. So some of the key uh, lessons learned. So we've been able to demonstrate Animox at a full scale in Australia. So hopefully that gets a lot of people excited to uh, give it a try with their plants. Um, and we've got the, the evidence of aeration and chemical dosage savings. We've estimated the payback period being less than 18 months. Mm -hmm. And we were able to start it up, I guess a crucial part of this project was from an existing biomass culture. Uh, so we slowly adapted our nitrification, denitrification system towards the Animox process without having to import some expensive, fancy bacteria from Europe, even if we were allowed to do that, which we probably aren't. So it's an important part of getting these Animox projects off the ground. Um, so the transition to Animox can be done in stages. So you don't have to you know, turn off the plant, turn it to Animox, turn it back on. You just, our, our philosophy is a gradual change from the conventional system to Animox. Um, and that obviously has benefits that you don't disrupt your operation at the site. Um, and now that the system's running properly, it's performing better than our conventional system did in terms of nitrogen removal and savings. It's more reliable during the cold temperatures as well than the conventional method. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, we've had success at, at low temperatures. 
And it's, it's suitable for a whole range of systems, sequencing batch reactors, extended aeration systems, pond treatment systems. Uh, there's a lot of potential benefits for remote and regional plants as well because there's, uh, you know, less intense sludge management, you know, you're less reliant on your aerators in terms of maintenance, so it's uh, much easier um, on the maintenance workers there. As well as if you inc incorporate the real-time monitoring, uh, you get the security to, to know that you'll always be within your discharge limits, you have a good idea of what's going on in the system and ensure compliance as well as uh, leading to the lower operating and uh, maintenance costs and improving the lifespan of your pumps and aeration system and better environmental outcomes from your less energy use. So uh, we, we think there's a lot of promise for the technology for municipal plants um, and the, the benefits scale with the size of the plants, high strength ind industrial wastewater definitely, like uh, the abattoir wastewater at DBC is a good application. Uh, I, I guess waste streams that contain high nitrogen but low organic is the dream for Anamox because uh, you, you remove those conventional costs of, of finding the carbon source and um, remote plants like I mentioned as well as even digest side, side streams and, and that sort of thing as well. So um, I'll actually wrap it up there but once again thanks for the, uh, the chance to present and uh, we, it was a real honour for the award.